You never appreciate what you've got until it's gone. It's an overused phrase that has stood the test of time and has always remained true as generation passes to generation. Looking back over my time at CIP and after, this phrase has really hit home for me. When I came to CIP, I had my own set of issues. I was recently diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I had no social skills, and I've been failing my college classes for two years straight. Those two years prior, I had been accepted into and entered the Florida Institute of Technology, pursuing a degree in mathematics. Now I was a mess who couldn't think straight and found myself in a program which I felt dictated my life in so many ways. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> At the time I entered the program, I had been accepted only three days before the fall semester had started, with no summer orientation. I packed my possessions into my Accord and drove up for Berkeley. It was soon to be a bumpy ride. Being thrown into the water wasn't easy. I had unpacking to do, assessment tests to take, modules to go to. Every big and little thing had to be done and gone to, all while I felt my independence being stripped away. My finances were controlled. I was told to be where and when. The state of my apartment, and to an extent my personal life, was kept under watch. My life as I knew it was being fundamentally changed, and the stress and uncertainty was eating at me. I was angry at the staff, angry at my parents, and angry at myself for letting myself be put into such a situation. To cope, I confided in my feelings with other students, and I learned many felt the same. Out of frustration, I ran for student senate on a platform of radical change. I fought tooth and nail to regain what I had brought myself to lose, and when I had felt like I had hit rock bottom, I resolved to fulfill the promise I had made to myself. That promise was to make the most out of the substantial sum of money my parents were spending on sending me to CIP. I wanted to do everything within my personal ability to take advantage of the program services and succeed. That was my turning point. I made some friends, which turned into a group of friends. I did my best to prove to the program that I could be responsible in as many aspects of myself as I could manage. I worked with my wonderful advisor and found substance in what the staff had to offer. I had my ups and downs. Much of it was two steps forward and one step back, but I knew that my only chance of success was through effort. After the first year it ended, I had a choice. I could leave the program and try to eke it out on my own, or I could go back to finish what I started. The choice, through an understanding of what CIP has available, and admittedly partially influenced by personal relationships, was to stay, and a good choice it was. The second year, I learned to refine myself. I put together the building blocks, and it was then that I had to stack them. In some aspects, I felt like I didn't need the program anymore, but my thinking had been identical the year before, and I chose not to fall into that trap. One of the greatest things I learned the second year was how not to judge. The very first year, I learned to tolerate people I disliked. The second, I learned to accept. I learned to resolve my personal issues with several of the students, and this lesson extended to some staff. When Bethany first joined CIP, I disliked her due to personal trust issues. I allowed my dislike to overtake my behavior and did not participate in her modules. As I got to know her, I allowed myself to accept that she wanted only the best for me and to assist me in gaining additional independence. The second half of my final year went by like a blur. I and my then girlfriend, who was also in the program, had chosen to move in together. And as the deadline to move in continued to creep in further, the more real it became. Planning, packing, Knowing the independence that we believed we earned loomed on the horizon, and finally, the day came. CIP was over. We had yet to move all our, of our possessions out of Berkeley. We chose to spend the night of the, of the floor of the apartment that we had recently leased. As we lay on the floor, I started to think about my advisor, who assisted me when I needed direction, my tutors, who pushed me when I felt like I had nothing left to give, my friends, who was always right next to who were always right down the hallway, available to see at a moment's notice. So many things that I sacrificed for my independence had outright evaporated. The realization was like a swift kick to the gut, and on the floor of my brand new apartment, I cried. You never appreciate what you've got until it's gone. 
I did well after leaving CIP. In the beginning, over time, however, certain old habits began to creep back in. I didn't have to wash my checkbook. Nobody was making me go to tutoring or do my homework. It was far too easy to avoid doing what I didn't want to do, and it became destructive. I found assistance by keeping in contact with the program, but the responsibility was still on my shoulders. It took a break from school and some conversations with my old advisor to bring myself together and find out who I was, where I wanted to go, and how to bring myself down to a baseline. From personal experience, I can tell you with absolute certainty to not let yourself fall again after spending so much time getting yourself on your feet. Don't let the time you spent in the program go to waste. Transitioning out of the program is by no means easy. So much that is given to you will one day be no more, and what CIP can do for you is prepare you for that. Nobody is here with a vendetta to make your life difficult. They're here to challenge you in as many aspects as they can, to build up your character and who you are as a person. I could tell you to listen to staff, go to your modules, and practice self-responsibility, but it's up to you to choose to do that. Every student in this room has the ability to push themselves beyond what they previously believed they could do. And every parent, in this room or not, has hopes and wishes that they'll get to see that. I wish the very best for each and every one of you, and know that your effort and perseverance will pay off what you invest in turn. Good luck. Thank you.